Hi. Hi. Now welcome to the next session. And this is about the blood supply of long bones. Very frequently asked question. The blood supply of long bones. Now first let us draw a long bone. First let us draw a long bone. And you know what does a long bone has? Long bone has got a shaft. It has got a epiphyseal end. Yeah. So this is the shaft, or which you can. This is the shaft, or you can even call it diaphysis. Now here you have epiphysis. Above and below you are having the epiphysis. Now here you are having epiphyseal. A growth plate cartilage is a plate of epiphyseal cartilage and here you are having a region called metaphysis now what is metaphysis metaphysis is nothing but the epiphyseal ends of diaphysis the epiphyseal ends of diaphysis is called metaphysis okay now please see any Long bone will have in its shaft one foramen and that is called nutrient foramen. Now this is called nutrient foramen. Yeah, are you able to follow? Nutrient foramen. Now we are having a single large tortuous nutrient artery. So this is single, this is large in its size and it is tortuous. It is tortuous. So this zigzag border or wavy border is called tortuous. Okay. This tortuous nutrient artery. Okay. This is the nutrient artery which is entering into the nutrient foramen. Okay. Of the shaft of the long bone. Sometimes it is associated with one vein or sometimes two veins are there running along with the nutrient artery. So here, after entering into the nutrient artery, after entering into the nutrient foramen, the artery is giving one branch that goes up, which is called ascending branch. Because it is going up, it is ascending branch. Other branch is going down and this is called the descending branch. So you have got a single large nutrient artery, which becomes tortuous at the site of its entry. Via the nutrient foramen, it, it enters into the shaft. It gives a branch which goes up called ascending branch. One branch comes down called descending branch. Both ascending and descending branches, they give lots of parallel branches. Now you see, you are having lots of parallel branches. These branches, they supply the metaphysis. Also, they are here anastomosing with the epiphyseal blood vessels. Now you see here, these uh, branches of the nutrient artery, they are supplying the cortex, the cortex, the inner two-thirds of the cortex and they are uh, supplying entire medullary cavity. Now please understand, they are supplying the inner two-thirds of the cortex. So if you take the cortex of the long bone, you know the cortex of the long bone is very thick, right? The cortex is made up of compact bone. It is this cortex which is very thick and it is the strength of the bone is nothing but the cortex. It is because of this cortex that we are able to transmit our weight. The long bone's job is transmission of the weight. As the cortex is very thick, the transmission of weight is possible. So the inner two-thirds of the cortex and the entire medullary cavity, the whole of it is called the medullary cavity. This medullary cavity is also referred as bone marrow. Now you know you have two types of bone marrow, red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow. In a newborn baby it is all red bone marrow. Lot of hemopoiesis is being done, that is production of RBCs is being done by the bone marrow in case of newborn baby. But as the baby is growing, few bones, they have their red bone marrow replaced by yellow bone marrow, yellow and fatty bone marrow. Okay, so the entire medullary cavity and the inner two-thirds of the cortex is supplied by our nutrient artery. And you know this cortex is covered by a layer and that is called periosteum. Now there is a periosteum which is covering this bone. 
the periosteum is having lots of blood vessels arteries and veins so there are lots of arteries and veins so these periosteal vessels they are small in size but many in number in size they are very small but in number they are large they supply the outer one third outer half of the cortex or outer one third outer one third of the cortex is supplied by the periosteal vessels these periosteal vessels are very very important if you see any operation if it is done on the bone the periosteum is reflected like this so whatever procedure the orthopedic surgeon wants to do on the bone he does afterwards he replaces the periosteum like this if there is no replacement of periosteum after the surgery obviously the bone will undergo a vascular necrosis so there is a vascular necrosis occurring if the periosteum is not being replaced over the surface of the bone you are understanding the periosteal vessels most of them are veins rather than arteries most of them are veins rather than arteries they are small in size but many in number and they are responsible uh, for the normal existence of the bone so if you remove the periosteum then the bone is subjected to avascular necrosis now coming to the metaphysis region now metaphysis is very highly vascular and some people even call metaphysis as lake of blood in the bone or pool of blood in the bone extremely vascular because it is having lots of blood vessels the special blood vessels what you are having in metaphysis they show hair pin bands now you see these are the hair pin bands these are the metaphyseal blood vessels or metaphyseal arteries the most distinguishing feature is they have got a hair pin band now why i am stressing so much regarding the hair pin bands because if there is any bacteria or viruses or emboli which are going here you know the metaphyseal arteries are basically end arteries what do you mean by end artery end artery is that artery which does not anastomose with any other artery you are understanding it does not anastomose with any other artery so what is happening the hair pin bends they are acting like safe heaven for these bacterial emboli or the infectious emboli and a colony is being proliferated there is a big colony that is being proliferated and now what happens the patient will come to us with osteomyelitis osteomyelitis now break the word so osteo means bone mylos means medullary cavity itis means inflammation so the bone is getting inflamed that is the compact bone the cortex part the medullary cavity is getting inflamed that is the bone marrow and that's why you are calling osteomyelitis now you know metaphysis is seen only in the children who are less than uh, the adolescent age in them you see the metaphysis later on what happens is the metaphyseal vessels they start anastomosing with the ascending and descending uh, branch of the nutrient artery also the anastomose with the epiphyseal vessels so if you take an adult the adult is not having metaphysis in his bone and the arteries which were previously present the end arteries there is a transformation where they become from end arteries into normal arteries that shows anastomosis that shows anastomosis that's why so osteomyelitis is common in children not in adults and if you take the epiphysis there are peri articular vascular arcades so peri articular peri articular vascular arcades now what do you mean by this peri articular vascular arcades peri means around articulation means joint the blood vessels are there in the form of arcades in latin this is also called as circulus vasculosus this is also called in latin as circulus vasculosus peri arterial vascular arcades also called as circulus vasculosus from here you are having the epiphyseal blood vessels which are supplying the epiphysis so these are the epiphyseal blood vessels so now what all types of vessels you are having supplying the long bone 
First, you have got the nutrient artery, seeing a large torture entering into the nutrient following, giving ascending and descending branch. Second, you have got the periosteal blood vessels. You are having, second, the periosteal blood vessels. Okay? And then you are having, third, metaphyseal arteries. These are the metaphyseal arteries showing hairpin bands. And fourth, you are having the epiphyseal arteries. So these are the four types of arteries which are supplying the long bone. Is the concept clear? Thank you.